Okay. It looks like we are live. How is everyone today? Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jason Levine. Thank you so much for joining me. And for today's brief live stream, we're going to be talking about how to easily match the color between shots using the Lumetri uh, color match feature powered by Adobe Sensei in Adobe Premiere Pro CC 2020. So uh, as always, thank you so much for joining me on this Friday. Got a lot of people here in the chats coming to you live on Behance, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter Periscope. So thank you so much for joining. Karim, Kyrie, Marco, Vishnu, Tyrone, Marcos, great to see you. Mina, Desiree, Mozaga. <laughs> Very nice to see everyone. Always a lovely international audience from everywhere. Max Maximov, Leo Enrique, great to see you as well. Sharice Addison, nice to see you. David Lewis, awesome. Okay, so uh, we're going to get right started here. Let me just hold on. As always, I told you I've been kind of reconfiguring some of my uh, my chat stuff here. So I'm trying to see if I can get these comment windows open nicely. All right. Yeah, that'll work. Hello, Greg Beecher from Bedfordshire in the UK. All right. So let's go ahead and switch this over, and we're going to get rocking here. All right, here we go. Okay, so uh, this is some content that uh, I've shown here a couple times on the stream. It's my uh, still, <laughs> still unfinished little mini doc on uh, the changes in electronic, analog, and digital um, music and video circa 1981. This is something I started a couple of years ago on stream. And uh, I just kind of use it now for, t for test content. But uh, in the process of going through various phases of this edit, there were a couple of different looks that I achieved on some of the various pieces of footage that I really liked. That I thought, oh, that would be nice if I could kind of apply it to everything and just match the color from one completely separate shot, all shot with the same camera, by the way, that's important to note in this case, but it doesn't have to be that way. In fact, one of the nice things about our color match shot match capability with Sensei is that's kind of the idea. If you've got different cameras, which all of course are gonna look slightly different, you know, maybe one has a slightly more greenish hue or magenta, whatever it may be, this does its best to fix and homogenize those so that they look the same, even though they were shot differently. So let me play a little bit of this back for you. You can see I've got my, my UI slightly reorganized here. I'm just gonna play a couple seconds of this and uh, probably skip around it so you can kind of see what some of the content looks like. Again, some of this content has been graded. Some of it I was test grading. Some of it is just sort of all over the place and then a bunch of it is still flat. Take a quick look at this. was a re-recording of um, an instrumental of Queens of Noise by the Runaways, circa 1977. There's uh, some clip which I don't know is missing. Got to rerun some of the analysis. You can see these clips are pretty flat. This one looks partially graded. Graded ones, definitely graded. A couple of different grades there. Some graded, some not, some flat. Okay. All right. So, how does this work? It's real simple. We're going to keep this one short because this is one of those things that, even if it doesn't do everything for you and get you all the way there, it can usually get you pretty close. And then, even if you're not a colorist, You've got a couple, well, you have lots of different ways that you can modify the color to get it a little bit closer. So as I was kind of reviewing back through all of this, there was a particular shot of this, of this Casio right here that I just really loved the look of. And I thought, okay, I kind of like this look, you know, this this device here, this is, uh, again, from 1981, it's called VL Tone, still have it, this is my actual VL Tone. Um, 
you know, the flat version or whatever, however I initially shot it. This is the graded version. And it just kind of had this, it, it felt sort of 1981-ish film-like. It's got a slight greenish hue to it if you're, if you're looking closely on the stream. And I just kind of liked the look of that and I thought it would look cool. And especially because you've got the white keys, it'll look well. It'll look good on the Moog as well and maybe on the, um, the joysticks of uh, that Galaxian uh, video game as well. So this is kind of the reference that I wanted to use. So the first shot that I wanted to kind of tackle was this one here, really trying to see like what it can do with that key brightness, okay? So the way that we do that is we're gonna go up to the Lumetri color panel here. And again, I'm in a modified color workspace. So up at the top here, and uh, we'll go into our color wheels and match tab right here. Now it's worth pointing out, as I mentioned, on all of this content, I've applied a, an input LUT here, which happens to be um, the uh, Nikon D800 flat profile. Now, the reason I added this is because if I disable this, what you'll see is I didn't shoot this stuff flat originally. Um, I think I was just do, you, doing test footage with whatever lens, I think this is the 24 to 70 f2.8. So I kind of added this input light in after the fact so that I could grade it just to give me a little bit more flexibility with how I wanted to colorize this stuff, okay? So all of these clips have these input LUTs applied. And I think based on when this was shot, some of them are, are, are Nikon, some of them are Canon too. I was still shooting Canon back in those days. Um, so we're gonna go into color wheels and match. And the first thing you can do, now you can access this from a couple of different places. Nicely, however, we've given you this button here, the comparison view. So this is going to give you a side-by-side -side look of your reference that you're trying to match to, and then the current frame that you're on. And now you're kind of working two screens in tandem side by side. So on the reference side, you'll see you even have your own little scrubber here. You can also just hover scrub the hot text, or you can grab the playhead here and scrub through and find you know, the appropriate frame that you want to use for matching purposes. Again, you can also just scrub the text right here. And uh, this kind of makes it easy to find to find that exact frame that you're trying to match against. And then for the current frame, and by the way, you'll see there's labels up at the top here, current frame and then reference frame. By the way, both of these clips are living in the same sequence. I get asked that a lot, like, oh, can you reference something externally? You can, you just have to throw it on a track in your sequence. Even if it's just on a, a random track for one frame, whatever it is, just so that you can capture that reference in the comparison view. That's a pretty essential way of how this works. So I've got the, uh, oh, that's actually not the frame I wanted though, is it? It's that one. So I've got my reference here. I've got the current frame that I'm on. Let's go over to color wheels and match. Now by default, it has this face detection box checked. It does a very good job of trying to match skin tone here. Um, obviously there's no faces in this, so this is unchecked. And I'm simply going to click apply match. And what Sensei does is it analyzes the tone and the hue and the light and, and the saturation, and then it applies that using the shadows, midtones, and highlights color wheels that you see here to create a very similar look. And right away, I mean, it, it looks pretty good. And again, I'm kind of looking at the off-white cream color of the keys against that Casio. Now, I probably want to add a little bit more, uh, a little bit more brightness to this. So again, we've got a couple of options here. Naturally, of course, you have the contrast uh, controls for your uh, highlights, midtones, and shadows here. So we could use these sliders inside of the color wheels to kind of bring that up. Now I don't want to do too much on the shadows here because I want to keep those blacks kind of nice and defined where it was right about there. Maybe uh, adjust the mid-tone contrast ever so slightly. Okay, just about right about there just to brighten it up a bit. And then of course I can go back up to basic correction and I can add back in some highlights here if we so desire. I've also got the white slider here, although I think this is probably pretty good. Now, one of the other cool things that you have in this view, in fact, it looks like it's getting even a little, a little creamy, a little less creamy on this side, so I probably need to bring those highlights down just a bit, all right, is that you have the ability to compare vertically or horizontally. So if I were to do a horizontal split, it shows you something like this, and you've got this divider right here. Now again, the luminance is a little bit different on that Casio. You can see that the light was hitting it from above, 
But as I'm scrubbing through this horizontal slider, when I compare sort of the hues of that off-white, they look pretty darn close, right? Again, this is where I could come in here and go, all right, do I need, how much, how much more do I need to add here? All right, maybe that, right? Okay, kind of really just kind of blew out those highlights a bit. But that seems to make it actually quite a bit closer now. Looks pretty good. And notice it was real time, right? Similarly, if we do the vertical split, same kind of thing, just like this. And you'll notice that now also the Moog has a bit of that, it's got a bit of that warmish, albeit slightly green hue, again, as part of whatever combination of effects I used on the VL tone grade and initially. And then you can go back to side by side like that. And okay, maybe I will back off the highlights ever so slightly. And maybe we even readjust the tint ever so slightly if we want. And in fact, that, that even seems to be doing it. Maybe it's one, one, minus 1 1.6, real simply. Now, the other really cool thing about this, again, now, depending upon how comfortable you are working with the color wheels, this is not a black box, meaning that um, all of this, everything, you saw me adjust the, the mid-tone contrast and etc. but all the settings here are editable as well. So if I wanted to take some of those highlights and pull them, you know, a bit, a bit warmer, I can do that. Ooh, and that even looks kind of nice too, right there. Might have, may have just nailed it right there. Or similarly grab the mid-tones and, you know, cool those off or bring them more into the green, whatever. That's obviously not working. Okay, we can just undo that change. Takes us right back to where we were. So all of this remains fully editable at all times. And Sensei gets you most of, if not all the way there, super quickly. And you can do this shot by shot really, really quickly. Now, you could also save this exact setting. Like if I know, because I shot all of these little, you know, I've got three cuts in a row here uh, of this keyboard, one, two, three. I could theoretically just save this uh, as a preset right here and then just apply that preset. To be honest, I like kind of tweaking it myself. So I might go to the previous clip right here and again, let's do a little apply match. Okay, it does its thing, looks pretty good. Wind back to the previous clip, same thing, apply match, it does its thing. Again, you can see it's really kind of adjusting that shadow and mid-tone contrast there. And maybe because the lighting is quite different here, this is where, you know, I, I'm gonna get a little bit more creative and taking a slightly, uh, you know, a slightly uh, cre um, uh a creative approach, a slightly more artistic approach to kind of matching these. But again, just by adjusting that highlight contrast here, now these kind of feel more homogenized. Again, you can always look at the before and the after, okay? And we can scrub ahead. Let's go back to this one here, okay? Before, after, okay? And the before, like you see it, you go, oh, well, that's actually pretty close. But you can see the keys have this cool hue. That was daylight. I think it was around 11 a.m. or so. Just getting a lot of that bluish desert daylight in there. Go back to the newly colorized one, and it just it just feels more homogenized, okay? Now, these are all fairly similar because, of course, they've all got that ivory kind of nature of the keys being those 70s and 80s keyboards. But what if I'm trying to match something that's, you know, not quite so close? So let's take a look at this one here. So again, this is the, the joystick of the Galaxian. Uh, oh, I moved the cursor, sorry. The joystick of my little uh, Coleco Galaxian video game here. So it's fairly close, but I'm seeing a bit more of this magenta e hue. This again, different time of day. Looks like also a different lens, same camera, but you know, not exactly the same. So I'll come in here using that same reference frame, apply match. And it now, you can see it just applied that slight, there's now this slightly more green hue that now when I look at these two, and especially this would be a great opportunity to do that side by side, you know, look at that joystick and look at the color of that VL tone. They're identical, especially, and it's, it's so great. I love this because you can see just like the dirt. I mean, this is, this is from 1981. So you can see all the little dirt, a little dirt and grime inside, <laughs> inside of these things. Um, it just it just works, and at any point, of course, we can do the before. It looks okay, but you can see there's this decidedly magenta, um, overwhelmingly magenta kind of feeling on the joysticks. 
go to the after, and now they just feel a bit more homogenized. Again, look at what your the reflection in the screen here and the joysticks here, and it just makes it really simple to kind of work with these things together. Even the backgrounds, you know, as you're seeing the kind of the bokeh in the background feels more homogenized, more complementary versus this, where this just feels kind of off. You definitely have this, you know, earthy magenta tone here and this this w mixture of cool cool and warmth over here, you know, a little red and uh, yellow and blue making some green up here. So really simple really easy to do and we can keep doing this right so we can go back to our side by side all right here's another one again these were some of the early uh the early shots take off face detection go ahead and apply match and you know right away it just kind of nails it and again this is where maybe maybe now we'll uh adjust that shadow contrast again just to make those black black hues just a little bit darker a little bit more dramatic you know as i'm looking at this side by side it all these don't these don't actually feel quite so similar. So I might, I might have to do a little bit more tweaking here manually, but it gets you there so much faster, right? You know, before this this doesn't look homogenized, even though now the black is it's a little it's almost a little too warm now. Again, I'd probably add back in a couple more highlights in here. And I'm no colorist, by the way. I'm just messing around with this. But you can do this quickly and get things to look similar and homogenized fast. And that's kind of the idea here, all right? You've got the ability to save presets. You can export these looks. It's real simple to share them as well if you're sending them to another editor or something like that. And uh, it just functions really, really wonderfully. And then once you've done your color match, of course, then don't forget that you also have the ability to come in here and let's get out of our comparison view for a minute. So let's say that now, you know, we wanted to do some individual tweaks to bring out, you know, certain hues in a shot. Let's go back to this one here. So maybe we want to kind of emphasize some of the reds here. Well, this is where we can use some of those new hue saturation curves that we introduced last year. So if we wanted to adjust the saturation of a particular hue, in this case, just this, this red reset button here, um, it's really easy to do that as well. And this is after the grade, after the fact. Remember that you're kind of stacking all of these things in order. Now, if we didn't want to do this on the same layer as the basic grade, this is something else, which uh, I've done this in other streams, but it's worth pointing out. This is one Lumetri layer. You can have multiple layers of different graded um, uh, 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 grading applications, nope, graded grading tabs on your footage here. So if I click the down arrow and say add Lumetri color effect, it's going to add another layer. Oh, there's even actually two layers on here. So let's go ahead and add a third one and we can rename this and we'll call this uh, Hue v Sat. Okay, so this is assuming that on this layer I've done Hue versus Sat changes. Come over to here, make my sample. Now again, you can see it selected kind of that mid-range color where I made my color selection, but this is the thing that's always been very daunting to me. Ah, the red is crossing the boundaries. Well, we've got this wonderful slider here, and this just allows you to drag that hue directly front and center, freely move this around. It just makes it so much easier and more intelligible just to figure out how this works. And then if I wanna do a straight increase of the saturation of that specific hue. I can hold down the shift key, shift key to constrain the vertical movement, and I can just start increasing it right there. And you can see how it's really emphasizing the red of that button without touching anything else. I can also desaturate. Turn that red gray, okay? Just like that. And what I love about this, if you're looking, let me see if I can zoom in simultaneously here. So, Whoops, okay, I'm not constraining anymore. But you can see that visually, this is showing you, right? There's saturation up at the top here. Oh, I have to zoom in a little bit more for you, sorry. Saturation up at the top and desaturation at the bottom. So visually, this vertical line is showing you exactly what this process does. Um, you know, for someone who's not a color pro, this is, this is great, you know, this is what you want. You can expand that range to, you know, affect adjacent colors if need be. Uh, you can also add more control points just by clicking, all right, or taking those away, or whatever it is that you want to do. 
So this makes it really, really easy. And again, now that this is all controlled on different layers, I can turn off that hue sat layer. It goes back to the original. Um, if I did multiple hue sat adjustments on here, they can all be on that one layer. I'm guessing that this second one here is probably uh, one flavor of the grade. Yeah. And then this other one here, maybe there's nothing. I just probably left that one open. Okay. Yeah. So again, you can enable and disable these one by one. It's just, it's just so good and so easy. And, uh, you know, my three most common ones here, hue versus sat to adjust the saturation of a particular hue. In this case, the red button, that reset button, hue versus hue to adjust the actual hue of a particular hue. So let's say that we wanted to take this button, let's select it again, and we wanted to change the hue altogether. Well, now when I click on that control point, you can see that we now have the color spectrum here. So I can go from red to purple to blue to green, you know, and we can change this real easily using hue versus hue, okay? And we can disable that module and take it back to just the hue versus sat change. So flexible, so easy. If you're a colorist, you're gonna know how all these things work. If you're a non-professional colorist like yours truly, it's so easy to understand that you can very quickly get a cool, sweet look matching across multiple shots. Again, even if using different cameras, using some Sensei technology and some really beautifully done implementation of these um, selective color curves, which is uh, what we officially called those last year when they were released at Max in 2018. Okay, so that is uh, shot matching and leveraging a little bit of the hue sat curves here um, in uh, Premiere Pro CC 2020. So we're gonna bounce over to the chat, see if there's a couple questions. If not, I'm gonna send you on your weekend way and hope you're having a good Friday there. All right. Let's go over and see what we've got here. If we've got any stuff brewing in Twitter Periscope. A lot of people watching on Periscope. What's up? Oliver Acuna, nice to see you. Bumbleton, Skull Charo. All right, Stripes McKay. Cedric. All right, Sue Cruz. Cortez. All right, DN Free. All right, no questions there. Okay, the Trinity Project, how are you? Doing well. Lucifer, nice to see you. Tina, hi. Colin Blake, good evening. Uh, Johnny Mnemonic, why not resolve? It's meant to be used in this manner. Use it. Yeah, I mean, look, that's the thing. I'm the first to say. Uh, if you're a pro colorist, if you're used to using resolve, you know, certainly, look, resolve does lots of things now. It does editing, it does sound design as well. Um, if you want to do your final edit in resolve, uh, for color rather, um, by all means, you know, you can use our EDL. You can just take your content directly into Resolve easily enough. Um, lots of ways to do that. Similarly, if you're trying to go into FCP via XML or Avid via AAF or whatnot, you can do that too. It's really entirely up to you. I'm not a Resolve user myself, um, so I don't use it for color. I, I try and stick with Lumetri. I like Resolve for color. You're right. That's kind of what they're known for. It's great for that. Lots of pros use that. If that's where you feel comfortable doing it, by all means. We're just making it really easy here in Premiere Pro. Okay, over to the Facebooks. Firaz Samir Zeki, ah, you're very kind. Thank you very much. Amo Lamoto from Pakistan. Gulistan Sevindik, sorry if I just kind of botched your name there, but hello, thank you for joining. All right, Fernando, hola. Juliana Cristina Popescu, hello. Emmanuel Salgado, hi. Greg Beecher, ah, the Casio VL tone. The only thing I learned to play was the demo tune it came with. Who remembers that demo tune? You can sing it. It goes. And it even changed the beat, right? It started out with uh, like a swing. And then I think in the <laughs> it went to this <laughs> which I think is rock too. Yes. Memories. Mohammed Kuptan. Wow, nice. Panagiota from Greece. Hello, Ahab. Very nice to see you. Jitesh CK, Dubai. Ron Photos from Alabama. How are you? Stacy Pulos from Bay Area. Great to see you as always. Manuel Gabriella from Italy. Travis from Germany. Uh, from Germany. Thomas Benner. <laughs> nice to see you. Thank you so much. Bill Gonzalez. Hello. 
All right. Oh, and uh, Michael Skordakis. Yes, that's a great uh, that's a great comment there about copy paste attributes. That's actually worth showing off too while I'm at it. So let me just hold on. I'm going to go back to uh, Premiere for a second here. Something that um, should not be forgotten. So I talked about making a preset. Uh, talked about just being able to kind of color these one by one, which, you know, if you're doing it for real, that's probably what you want, right? Because you want control, you know, unless, you, unless you're totally pressed for time, whatever. I mean, everybody works differently. Every project is different. That's understood. But one of the other things that you can also do uh, which I, I I personally sometimes even forget to mention myself, is that you can copy and paste attributes. So once you've done a bunch of stuff in Lumetri, uh, you can copy that. And then you can, in the timeline, let's say, select, you know, X number of clips simultaneously. Again, my UI is all kind of scrunched here. Right click, control click and choose paste attributes, okay? And when you go into paste attributes, what you see is not only does it allow you to paste, obviously all any sort of motion keyframe things, opacity adjustments, any time remapping if it makes sense, but all the effects that you've applied, and this includes all of the layers of Lumetri that you've added, which is why, by the way, it's very important to label those if you're going to have multiple layers. You see, I've got my Hue versus Sat1 labeled. That was good. The other two I didn't label. I didn't know what was on them. My bad. So this is a really fast way to like get that color match, get that grade going, and then select all the clips in your timeline and just paste. And if I did that right now, it's going to paste that look to all of those, uh, you know, simultaneously. And as mentioned, you know, that's not necessarily always going to do it. Uh, there also might be other things on those. Uh, okay, so yeah, this one here, I mean, it looks cool. I don't know if it's matched quite as well. That one, yeah, looks pretty good. Next one here. Yeah, now I had obviously some other low contrast test grade going on here. So this one looks a little bit kind of out of gamut there. But again, assuming that these were, there was nothing done to them, that same look would have been applied and it would have done a pretty good job. With color match though, don't forget, part of Sensei's brilliance is that it's it's never gonna be exactly the same. So a color match copy paste might be a little bit of a gamble, only in the sense that if it's a totally different shot, different time of day, different camera, whatnot, it's using the exact same settings. So the exact same settings might not be the proper matching attributes for that particular clip. Not that you can't do it, and sometimes it will work brilliantly. You know, again, if I had a series of shots that were taken at the same time, almost guaranteed to work pretty successfully there. In this case, because these were all different, different times of day, different rooms, not quite as brilliant. Also notice my score was 420. Okay. <laughs> all right, a little humor there. Okay, let's go back to the Facebooks and see what else we got. Thank you for that, Michael. That was a great comment. All right, Stacy, not to be lazy, but I am. There are color filters like on Instagram and Facebook. I found some with AP, but not much. Are there more? Sincerely lazy. Also a filter that will follow faces and smooth them out. I'm getting older and 4K is killing faces. There are plugins that you can buy. Not sure how to add them. Hey, Stacy. so this is actually a great question too. So um, as far as the color presets, this is a gripe of mine. We still have the same presets in there. So there aren't any new ones. Now you might be able to find, I found some online. A lot of our users sometimes publish these things and share uh, some of those files. You can find some. Um, if in particular with skin tones and smoothing, I would highly recommend, I'm gonna put it in the, uh, in the Facebook chat here and for everyone else following. Let's see, why is this not uh, finding you? Stacy Pulis. There you go. Uh, I would check out Digital Anarchy. They're a plugin provider, and it's called uh, Beauty. I think it's called Beauty Box. Sorry, Stacy. I just put in Skin Smoother. It's called Beauty Box. Um, it's a fantastic plugin. It's it's basically become an industry standard. They're good buds of mine too, so always love helping out. You know, uh, plugin companies. 
it's awesome. And I know what you mean, like how 4K and 8K is killing faces. This this plugin is really just great for smoothing things out and, and homogenizing the look. And it's really wonderful. Um, and the plugin installers are really pretty much plug and play and pretty easy this uh, these days. So, you know, you just want to check it out. Michael's asking, when will face detect skin beautifying be incorporated? Right. <laughs> Yeah, uh, you know, again, the, it keeps the plugin uh, infrastructure alive. So maybe one of these days, but for now, I would recommend using something like that. Okay. Uh, Michelle, does the reference shot have to be in the same sequence? Yes, at present it does. So that's why I'm saying if, you know, in here, let me see if I can find uh, a shot real quickly just to kind of reemphasize that point. I know that kind of sucks. Seems like you should be able to have it in a secondary monitor or something like that. I, I hear you and I I get it, I understand. Um, okay, hold on, I'm just gonna re, I gotta just redo my UI for a second here. I'm gonna pull in just a random reference image, something from my Dropbox. Uh, okay, these are called beautiful shots for screens. So let me see, I'm trying to find something that has like some significant time of day look to it. Okay, this is a pretty good one. All right. And I'm going to stick this in my sequence. Okay, actually, wait, I'll wait. I'll wait to stick it in the sequence. Let me switch over back to my screen here. Okay, so I just, I just imported this screenshot. So let's say that this is, this is the reference look that I want to use for my shots. Um, Oh, ASN83 is saying Beauty Box is an amazing plugin for skin. So there you go, Stacy. Yeah, I mean, take my word for it, but it is it is awesome. And again, they've 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 been doing it a long time, and they they know how to do it right. So uh, let me go back to the project panel here, and I'm going to take this reference still. I'm going to stick it stick it up here, okay? Just or again, I could stick it on just any free video track, whatever, just, just somewhere. And you know, the default in this case is like five frames in duration. That just happens to be what it is. Um, oh, and of course, yeah, I want to do that too. I want to, uh, uh, fit scale to the frame size here. Okay. So that it doesn't even have to be the whole frame. Uh, maybe I'll even scale it up just a little bit. I'm, I'm, doing this blindly here just because I've got my UI kind of messy. Okay, there we go. All right. So if we go back to, let's scrub through this here. Oh, so what time was that? Around 13 seconds? Yeah. So let's take something that, yeah, all these shots are so stylized and graded. I don't know. i to find something good. Here, maybe, maybe something like this, this shot right here. Okay, and let's go into color wheels and match. No face detection, go into comparison view. And now I'll scrub this to, what do we say, about 13 seconds? Okay, so yes, just that. You find the frame, it's in your sequence. Do your apply match. Okay, and right away, I mean, it's not, it's not perfect. You can kind of see what it did, but it, it acquired that one, that sort of golden hour, sunset, warm, red hue, and kind of applied it to that VL tone look. Whoops, what did I just do there? And uh, really just made that look super cool. How did I switch? What did I do? All right, that's what I did. I clicked away. Sorry, my UI is so difficult to navigate today. Again, here's the before. It looks okay, but decidedly not quite the same. And here's the after, and you can see how there's this this homogenized kind of look. Again, this is where having that side by side comes into play. Again, this is an interior shot. That's an exterior outdoor shot. Very, very different. You know, this was lit inside. This is obviously natural light, but you can see that there's there's a color similarity, particularly in the browns of the buildings. Look at what it did. And this is where when you go to the before. I mean, there's also some similarity here, but there's decidedly more green. And it's, the, again, if you're looking at the sky, it's not the same, whereas this kind of adds that homogenized feel to it, particularly in the reflection right here, right? This, you know, when I look at 
compare this and this, these look very similar to me. So if I was cutting between these shots right now, you know, for whatever reason, zzz, zzz, it, it kind of feels the same to me, right? And that's the idea. Very cool. Great question. Okay. All right, back to the cues here. Okay, Angelos, does it work well if I've made some adjustments on the same Lumetri effect or do I have to reset before matching? Uh, great question. I've actually found that, um, you know, you should try it with the exception of like an input LUT. Um, now basic corrections can apply too. Um, I, I would try it raw, you know, or just uh, un, unretouched at all. Again, uh, input LUT notwithstanding, because again, if something is... Uh, if, if it's flat and you're, you know, this way, it's just going to give you a little bit more latitude in terms of attempting to try and match colors. If everything is already super contrasty and saturated, it's just going to, it, it's just probably not going to get it quite as quickly or quite as accurately. So you can, you can do either or. I tend to try out everything just flat minus again an input LUT if necessary. Okay. Psycho Stick, thank you. All right. Fernando. Gracias. All right. Appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Leo. Okay. Muhoza. I like this. Great. Damien, love the cross-platform support and software support. Awesome. Uh, okay. Looking for the question. Amberly Cooper, what's up? How are you doing? Nice to see you. Peter Whiter. Hello. Michelle, love this. All right. Joyce from Brazil. Okay. TG, oh, you got some issues. All right, well, hey, man, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, you know, if it's something that uh, you need a follow-up on, um, you know, you can hit me up on Twitter and I can I can try and escalate with Adobe Care for you. All right. Dana, oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. Tiza from Nigeria, you're learning. Thank you so much for watching. All right. Stephanie Reed, how are you? Always great to see you. Uh, Tisa, yes, it's not complicated. That's kind of the nice thing. It's it's just awesome, you know. All right, a lot of people chiming in about Beauty Box too. That's good. My buddies at uh, at uh, Digital Anarchy should be very happy about that. All right. Okay, Muhammad. Question: After grading my footage, there is a gradient most of the time, mostly on gray color. How to get rid of this? Okay, so I'm assuming you're talking about there's some kind of banding. ASN, again, 530M, and I'm staying with Jason. Ah, thank you, ASN. Appreciate that. Um, if you're experiencing banding when you are grading or um, exporting, this is very likely for one of several reasons. So one, if you're capturing content, you know, and it's 8-bit. Now, Premiere Pro is always working in a 32-bit float container. That's kind of the brilliance of Premiere, that's always been our thing. Even if like my footage, it's D800, uh, I wasn't going through HDMI, it was just direct to the card, so it's H.264, MP4, um, 24 megabit, but still an 8-bit 8 uh, video. It's already, you know, stuff is already lost at the sensor, so there's only so much you can do um, in terms of if there are artifacts or other elements, if it wasn't properly exposed, where you may see some banding. Now, assuming that none of that is there on the source material and you're working with Lumetri and you're exporting, typically if you're seeing banding, and let me show you what I mean by that. And this is a great graphic my buddy uh, Max Hagelstam in Sweden put together. Um, now, this it says dynamic link here because this is something to keep in mind when you're using dynamic link between Premiere and After Effects. But if you're, if you're getting these... You see these liney band artifacts, okay? Versus if you're in 16-bit, you see it's nice and smooth, right? There's none of that there, okay? Um, if you're getting this in Premiere, this banded look, what that's probably telling me is you might have a mixture of 32-bit float effects and 8-bit effects. So that's one reason why that can happen. So when you go into the effects uh, menu, you'll notice up at the top here that there is a selector for 32-bit color, okay? So and if you click on that, it's only gonna show you 32-bit color effects. If that is unchecked, however, 
and we go into, let's say, color correction here, okay? So take a look at this. So first of all, of course, Lumetri color 32-bit, as expected. That's what I just told you. But a lot of our older color effects and uh, legacy color effects, the change color, channel mixer, color balance, the old um, color balance HLS, which you can now, of course, do via secondary color HLS. You can do that in the Lumetri panel now, and it's 32-bit, so I don't recommend this one anymore. If you mix 8-bit with 32-bit, that automatically dumbs the whole sequence down to 8-bit, and almost guaranteed whether you're doing a fade from black, right? So again, the gray, you're getting that the gradient from black to whatever your first frame, color frame is, you're going to see that banding. You're going to see those artifacts. Um, so the key to avoid them is to make sure that you're only using 32-bit effects. Some of my favorite old-school plugins, there's a series from Red Giant called Misfire. They're um, film emulation plugins. Now most people are just selling overlays, which look just as good. But the old-school Misfire, maybe they have a new version of it. I have an old version. Um, they were 8-bit, so whenever I'd put them on something, you know, we're shooting 4K, and it's beautiful, and I put these 8-bit effects on, and I export them, and I fade up from black, you get this banded gradient thing. It doesn't look good. Now, again, there's other reasons that can happen. I talked about dynamic links between Premiere and After Effects. You want to make sure that if you have a dynamic link that you're setting After Effects to 16-bit. Right, so there's the bit depth selector in the in the um, in the program monitor, program panel, properties panel, no project panel, <laughs> project panel. <laughs> Change it to 16 bit. If you leave it at 8 bit, once again, it's telling Premiere, oh, we're working in 8 bit, and everything goes down to 8 bit, and you get those banded artifacts. Okay. All right, couple more seconds for some questions here. See if we got any more on YouTube. We enjoy. What's up? <laughs> good 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 timing for you to see the score on there love that all right gary groves how are you f sminick oh yeah i mean i'll tell you i've gotten a lot better with color it's not in your wheelhouse i'm no expert i feel comfortable doing it now and i've watched enough uh, tutorials from some of my friends like simon walker and robbie carmen and uh, and even uh, Stu mashwitz at red giant you know these are these are you know legends of color but just knowing kind of how to navigate through these, I feel a lot more confident doing it and can, again, usually achieve the look pretty quickly. Any big changes coming? Someone's asking. Uh, not presently, of course. Uh, you know, we just had kind of our bigger release just about a month ago um, at Adobe Max, but always updates coming in Creative Cloud, so stay tuned for those. Okay. All right, what else have we got here? Uh, ProRes Raw. Coming soon. We are listening. Can't give you a date, but we're working on it. All right. Ryan, very informative. Thank you. Vahan, hello. Amber, so glad you're doing great. It's been quite some time since I heard your record. I've got a new single coming out. I want to point out, too, is we're ending the stream December 13th, a week from today. Fear the Q-tip. Fear the Q-tip. Don't push it too far into your ear. Sinjiredi Sukumar, hello. You are very, very welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Karim. What camera am I using for streaming? This is the very D800 that I shot all this stuff with. Stacy, how did you get the split screen again? Yes, uh, when you're in the comparison view, go back here one more time for you. In the comparison view, you've got three buttons down at the bottom here. So the first is side by side, the second is vertical split, the third is horizontal split. Side by side is the default. So this is what you should see. Uh, when you go into the view. By the way, um, you know, this is for uh, color match, but remember, we also have, you know, frame comparison. So when you switch to frame comparison mode, notice it's before and after. So this is a great way to um, identify, like, the changes between a shot. So, right, so this is the, the before grade or the after grade, or actually they're reversed right now, um, right? but you get the idea. So uh, that's where those buttons are contained down here. All right, so side by side, vertical split, horizontal split. Okay. All right, looks like we've got just one or two more. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad. 
Stacy, you don't have those buttons. Hmm. Okay. Well, if you're in the latest version of Premiere, you should have them. Um, why wouldn't you have them? You have to be in the comparison view. So if you're not in comparison view in here, but I'll, I'll, I'll switch back one more time for you. If you are not in, so you don't see anything on screen when you're not in comparison view. So right now we're just in the regular program monitor uh, output view. If you've dragged the comparison view button into your button uh, button panel, once you click that, notice those buttons show up. Now, if you don't have the comparison view button, you can add that from the button editor here. So click on the plus sign, all right? You'll see the comparison view button, and then just drag it down into your program monitor buttons like that, okay? Remember that you can also access the comparison view, even if this button isn't in your program monitor, from the color wheels and match um, Lumetri tab. So right here, and this will automatically put you into that side-by-side -side view that I showed you before. So if you're not seeing them and you're in the latest version, uh, something is very wrong. <laughs> so let me know, you should have those buttons, all right? Ron Corleone, ah, uh, that's very awesome. Thank you very much. And Diella Michelle, hello. Okay, all right, and let's just see one more check over here. Susanna Metzger, hello, always nice to see you. And that's that. Okay, and we've got Humada, all right. And ASN is asking if I have any tutorials about Element 3D Element 3D plugins. Okay, unfortunately, no. Um, I would definitely, of course, check out Video Copilot, Andrew Kramer. Um, I don't have any tutorials on that stuff, but I'm pretty sure, of course, he does. So highly recommend all of Andrew's things. All right. Oh, DN Free. So interesting. Never used this. Only began designing packaging. Excited to dive into video. Oh, sweet. Yeah, I mean, the nice thing is, you know, we make it easy. The Lumetri panel, the basic panel, is essentially the Lightroom develop module or the, the, the basic controls that you find in camera raw. So it's very easy to get started and again, very quickly kind of achieve those homogenized looks, all right? Got it, Stacy's got it, awesome. Okay, sweet. Joel Lee, where is color match within Lumetri? Yes, it is, in, it is inside the Lumetri color panel in one of the tabs, okay? It's color wheels and match. Is Sensei a third-party plugin? No, Sensei is our internal native AI machine learning technology that is now built into all of Creative Cloud applications, all right? Karaman Atar, thank you so much. Robert, have a great weekend as well. Joel, everybody. Uh, Richard, Trinity Project, Lucifer, Tina, Colin, Johnny, Nasser, Smidic, Gary. We enjoy every day. Peter. All right, Susanna, why do I not see the project screen under the color workspace? Um, remember, you know, workspaces, they're not, mine are modified. So if you double click on the workspace, it'll reset to the default. You should see it there, but you won't see those additional buttons, remember, unless you go into comparison mode. Okay, so until Monday, everyone, have a great morning, afternoon, evening, weekend, wherever you are in the world. I'll be back Monday right here on Twitter, Periscope, on Facebook, on YouTube, on Behance. If you've got topics that you want me to stream on, I've been grabbing a lot from the chats. Pick, uh, hit me up on Twitter at Beetlejace. That's where I get a lot of the inspiration to do these. And uh, until then, have a great, great rest of your day, and we'll see you again next time. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye.